on i cs kalyani shirode icsi faculty welcome you all for this session on lesson 12 of your sbec syllabus so today we are going to study about conversion of business entities we have learned various business entities in our syllabus so now if you want to convert your business entity from one form to another what legal aspects are involved what are the procedures to be followed are covered in this specific chapter so now you'll think that which business entities are you talking about ma'am so we are going to study about conversion from private company to public company public company to private company conversion of one person company into either private or public company or even conversion of section 8 company into any other form of organization or conversion of unlimited liability company into a limited liability company or conversion of company which is limited by guarantee to a company limited by shares or conversion of llp into company private company into llp so these are all the conversions which we are going to study in this specific chapter so now you'll think that okay so this is a very lengthy chapter or vast chapter trust me it is very easy chapter once you know the basics it is really very 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 easy to answer in the exam and yes questions are asked from this specific chapter so you need to be thorough with this chapter so now we have studied that in few circumstances we are mandatorily required to convert our entity or in few circumstances we can voluntarily also convert our entity so this is how we are going to study each and every kind of entity and its conversion so section 18 of companies act 2013 deals with the conversion of companies which are already registered and we can convert the company by alteration of memorandum as per section 13 and alteration of articles as per section 14 of the companies act so now starting with the first conversion kind first is your conversion of private company into a public company now as you all know that we have studied features of private company features of public company so whenever you are converting from one type to another you are required to take care of those features because that are the characteristics of that type of company okay so now conversion of private company into a public company so again as per section 18 we are going to do this and section 14 and section 13 okay so now how this is going to happen there will be a process we are going to alter the uh, articles of association and memorandum of association so for this we are required to pass a special resolution in a general meeting now as you all know that public company minimum number of members is 7 so if we don't have 7 members then we are required to have minimum 7 members in the company then only public company can be incorporated so alteration of articles is made as we mention few restrictions in the articles of private company once it gets converted into public company then these restrictions are to be taken out so alteration of articles of private company shall be made how that they are not going to include restrictions limitations which are required to be included in the articles of private company such as your minimum number of members maximum number of members transfer of shares number of directors quorum of the general meeting etc so now the company ceases to be a private company and it will become a public company after the conversion so now what will be the procedure first we are going to call a board meeting okay so now notice will be issued according to provisions of section 173 of companies act and secretarial standard 1 for convening the board of directors meeting what will be the agenda the agenda will be to pass a board resolution to get approval of directors for conversion of private into public okay then we are required to fix date time place for holding general meeting to get approval from the shareholders by way of special resolution for conversion of private company into public company 
we are required to approve notice of general meeting along with the agenda and explanatory statement which is to be annexed to the notice of general meeting as per section 102 we are required to authorize any one director or company secretary to issue notice of general meeting and we are required to pass a board resolution for increase in number of directors if directors are less than three because in public company minimum three directors are required then we are going to issue a notice of general meeting now this notice will be issued and this meeting will be of members so general meeting notice is issued to all members directors auditors of the company again according to the provisions of section 101 of companies act and secretarial standard 2 then general meeting is taken a general meeting as scheduled and then we are going to pass necessary special resolutions to get shareholders approval for conversion of private into public along with alteration in articles of association under section 40 for such conversion then the step compliance step that we are required to file the e-forms for alteration in articles of association conversion from private to public so we are required to file few e-forms with the concerned registrar of companies starting with the first form we are required to file mgt 14 form this form is for filing special resolution with roc so we have passed a special resolution for conversion of private company into public company so we are required to file this resolution within 30 days of passing special resolution in the general meeting so this form what will be the attachments attachments will be general meeting notice along with copy of explanatory statement certified true copy of special resolution altered memorandum of association altered articles of association and anything else will be your optional attachment then we are required to file form e form inc 27 which is application for conversion of private company into a public company so again what will be the attachments for this form minutes of the general meeting where we have received the approval for conversion and altered articles of association then altered copy is to be attached certified through copy of board resolution can be attached as optional attachment and other information if any can be again attached as optional attachment okay then we have scrutiny of documents by roc once you file all these e-forms, ROC is going to scrutinize your e-forms and the attachments and if they are satisfied that you have complied all the provisions properly, then they will close the former registration of the company and after registering the documents, they will issue a certificate of incorporation as if it is the first registration. So this is how we can convert a private company into a public company. So basically you should keep in mind that the restrictions are to be removed. Minimum number of members if not 7 then we are required to increase it to 7. Minimum number of directors if not 3 we are required to increase it to 3. And by passing a special resolution we can convert this company into another form. Now correct vice versa conversion of public company into a private company so now this conversion of status of company from public to private when it will become effective from the date of receipt of the approval of the registrar by means of issuing a new certificate of incorporation which sections are involved in this section 13 14 15 and 18 of companies act are involved for converting your public company into a private company now a public company can be converted only after obtaining shareholders approval by passing the special resolution again first and foremost requirement is alteration in articles of association because once they are going to convert it into private restrictions are there in private company that restrictions are to be mentioned in the articles of association okay then a copy of order of central government approving alteration it will be filed in form inc 27 with the prescribed fee and with the copy of altered articles now what amendments are required there will be change of name there will be alteration of memorandum there will be alteration of articles and new certificate will be 
receipt. Then we are required to alter all the letterheads, books, papers, and everywhere wherever your name of the company is involved, we are required to alter the same. What is the procedure? Procedure is again to hold the board meeting. Okay, as per section one seventy three and secretarial standard one. What will be the agenda? Approval of conversion. Then we are going to authorize any director, company secretary for all the compliances. Authorizing professional legal practitioner. So initially, uh, it was required to have approval from the tribunal. Now, by passing this special resolution, also you can convert the public into private company with few other documentation. Then, date, time, place of general meeting is fixed. To, uh, to get the approval from the shareholders, then general meeting will be holded, held, and then again special resolution for alteration in AOA, MOA along with conversion will be passed. Then we are required to file form MGT 14 with ROC again with the prescribed fee. This is for the special resolution 30 days from passing the special resolution form is to be filed. After that, new certificate of incorporation will be received. Now there are few things to be taken into consideration because as it's it is a public company coming into private company, then you are required to give few declarations. If there is a key managerial personnel, then he is required to give declaration that no resolution is pending. If the company was listed, then all formalities have have been done to delist the shares. So these are few basic things to be kept in mind. Okay, then we have the specific conversion. That conversion is from one person company to a private company. Okay, now you should keep in mind that each form of organization has its own characteristics, as I discussed earlier also. So those characteristics are to be taken into consideration while converting. So you are required to balance both, and you are required to see in which form of organization you are entering, and what are characteristics of those organization, as well as what were your earlier characteristics. If you are required to amend those, then you are required to do that procedure. So now, one person company can be converted into private limited or public limited, but Voluntarily, you cannot convert it for two years, but there are few rules. In few circumstances, you are required to compulsorily, mandatorily convert your one-person company into either private or public company. So, what is this rule, or what is this condition? The condition is if the paid-up share capital of one-person company exceeds fifty lakh rupees. And average annual turnover exceeds two crore rupees, then it shall cease to be entitled to continue as a one-person company. So now, such one-person company is required to convert itself within six months of the date on which paid-up share capital is increased beyond fifty lakhs, or last day of the relevant period during which average annual turnover exceeds two crore rupees, as the case may be. They can convert into either a private company with minimum two members and two directors, or a public company with at least seven members and three directors, as per the provisions of Companies Act. Now they are required to alter their memorandum of association, articles of association by passing a resolution to give effect to the conversion to make changes. So now. One person company within period of sixty days from the date of applicability, they are going to give notice to the registrar in form INC five, informing that they have ceased to be a one person company and that it is now required to convert itself into a private company or a public company. Why? Because either their paid-up share capital has been increased or their average annual turnover. Is exceeding the threshold limit. So, one person company or officer, if they don't comply any provision or they contravene the provision, then they are they shall be punishable with fine, which extend up to ten thousand rupees, or further fine up to one thousand rupees per day. Now, they themselves get converted into private or public company after increasing minimum number of members and directors to two or. Minimum of seven, as the case may be. 
and two or three directors as the case may be by maintaining the minimum paid up capital as per the requirements okay so this is how we are going to do it what is the process first again conducting the board meeting notice will be issued as per section 173 what will be the agenda to discuss with the directors that they have crossed the limits and now mandatory conversion is required board resolution is to be passed for increase in number of directors two or three as the case may be board resolution to get approval of directors for increase in shareholders minimum two or seven as the case may be resolution to get shareholders approval for alteration in memorandum and articles of company <coughs> and to approve issue notice of general meeting now roc form filing is to be done compliance filing e form inc 5 so for conversion we have few e forms within 60 days from the period when conditions are attracted we are required to give notice to roc that they have, we have ceased to be opc and now we are required to convert ourselves into private or public so what will be the attachment certified copy of the board resolution copy of duly attested latest financial statements certificate from a chartered accountant in practice for calculation of average annual turnover during that relevant period this is mandatory certificate if the threshold limit is exceeded on account of average annual turnover any other information shall be given as optional attachment we are required to file e form dir 12 for appointment of directors e form mgt 14 for filing special resolution with explanatory statement e form inc 6 is to be filed for conversion of opc into private or public or conversion of private into opc so if your paid up capital exceeds or your average annual turnover exceeds then application is made in inc 6 within 6 months from the effective date when the limit was exceeded if one person company wants to voluntarily convert themselves after 2 years of its incorporation then also inc 6 is to be filed what are the attachment board resolution copy altered copy of memorandum article duly attested latest financial statements special resolution and any other information as optional attachment then the concerned registrar of companies will check the attachments check the e forms and if satisfied they will issue a certificate so this is how conversion can be made now your next conversion is private company into one person company so now whenever you are willing to convert a private company into one person company so just imagine that how many members are there what are the articles what are the restrictions of a private company and what are the restrictions of one person company so first and foremost thing which you are required to keep in mind is that a private company other than company registered under section 8 can get converted into one person company now their paid up share capital must be less than 50 lakh rupees their average annual turnover must be less than 2 crore rupees then only by passing the special resolution they can convert themselves into one person company before passing such resolution the company shall obtain the no objection certificate from members and creditors they are required to file copy of special resolution in ngt 14 again inc 6 form which we just discussed is to be filed for conversion into one person company directors will give declaration by way of affidavit that all members creditors have given their consent for conversion paid up capital is less than 50 lakhs and average annual turnover is less than 2 cr rupees list of members is to be given list of creditors is to be given latest audited balance sheet pnl account is to be given and copy of no objection of secured creditors is to be given after roc scrutinizes each and every document if satisfied he will provide issue a certificate and we can say that the conversion is done so again what were the steps board meeting as usual you are required to issue notice what will be the agenda to get approval of directors to fix date time place of general meeting to approve notice of general meeting along with agenda explanatory statement and authorize in a director cs to issue notice of the general meeting as approved by the board before passing 
special resolution company shall obtain no objection in writing from existing members and creditors okay because it is a one person company one member so all members must give their no objection then only it can happen then general meeting notice is given and to all members directors auditors of the company notice will be issued general meeting will be convened quorum will be checked whether auditor is present will be seen if not then leave of absence is granted or not special resolution to get shareholders approval for conversion will be passed and approval of alteration in moi is to be taken then roc form filing e form mjt 14 again for filing the special resolution within 30 days of passing the resolution what will be the attachment to the c form notice of general meeting along with copy of explanatory statement certified proof copy of special resolution alter, altered copy of memorandum altered copy of articles and anything as optional attachment inc 6 is to be filed for conversion again what will be the attachment list of members list of creditors letter solicited balance sheet p and l account copy of no objection of secured creditors noc of members creditors and directors they are going to give the declaration by way of affidavit which we just discussed other information as optional attachment what will be the duty of roc is going to check the e forms attachments if satisfied again he'll be issuing a certificate to effect the conversion so if one person company or any officer contravenes any of the provisions or the rules then the opc or any officer of such company shall be punishable with fine up to 5000 rupees further fine of rupees 500 per day during such during which the such contravention continues okay then we have conversion of section 8 company into any other kind now as you all know section 8 company is having a different object it is for promoting few things and it is not for earning profits which means they are going to earn profits but they are not going to distribute it they are going to use those profits in their development of business only so now if you are willing to convert a section 8 company you are required to check what privileges you have taken what benefits you have taken and then only conversion can be completed so company registered under section 8 they can convert themselves into any other kind but they cannot convert themselves into a one person company this is the mandatory thing which you need to keep in mind if you get a question in which they have said that it is converted into opc answer is absolutely no because section 8 company cannot be converted into one person company so now there are few conditions for conversion of the section 8 company into any other kind such as that if the section 8 company is willing to convert into a company of any other kind a special resolution at general meeting is required explanatory statement is to be annexed to the notice and it will have in detail the reasons for opting such conversion including the date of incorporation of the company what are the principal objects of the company which we have mentioned in the memorandum of association reasons why the activities for achieving the objects of the company cannot be carried on in the current structure that is as a section 8 company what are the principal main objects of the company which we are willing to alter and what would be the altered objects and reasons for alteration is to be given main thing what are the privileges or concessions which currently the company is enjoying or enjoyed such as the tax exemptions or approvals for receiving donations or approval for receiving contributions including the foreign contribution land other immovable properties if any if they were acquired by the company at concessional rates or prices then the market prices prevalent at the time of acquisition and the price that was paid by the company that is to be written details of donation received by the company that is to be mentioned and what how it is utilized is to be mentioned then we are required to give the details of impact of the proposed conversion on the members of the company including details of any benefit that may accrue to the member as a result of the 
conversion that MGT 14 form, our favorite one to file the special resolution. Then application is to be done in form INC 18 with the regional director. INC 18 with the regional director with the prescribed fees with a certified true copy of the special resolution. Copy of the notice for meeting including explanatory statement or approval for converting into a company of any other kind and also attach a proof of serving the notice to all the authorities. So this is how we are required to give INC 18. Copy of the application with annexures as filed with RD that to be filed with the registrar also. So we have rule 22 of companies incorporation rule. Few conditions to be complied by Section 8 company for conversion such as within a week the company once it submits the application to the RD within a week they are required to publish a notice with their own expenditure and the copy of the notice as published will be sent to the RD. Said notice shall be informed INC 90 and it shall be published at least in one vernacular newspaper whatever that region is having the newspaper having wide circulation and at least one in English language English newspaper having wide circulation and also on the website of the company if any as may be notified or directed by the central government. Company is going to send the copy of notice simultaneously with its publication together with a copy of the application all attachment by registered post or hand delivery to the chief Commissioner of Income Tax who is having jurisdiction over the company. Okay. Income Tax Officer as well as the Charity Commissioner, Chief Secretary of the State in which registered office is situated, any organization, department of central government, state government or authority within 60 days it is to be done of the receipt of the notice after giving opportunity to the company. So whatever you are doing, you are required to give it to these authorities also and if any of these authorities wish to make any representation to regional director, they will do it within 60 days of the receipt of the notice after giving an opportunity to the company. Copy of proof of serving such notice shall be attached with the application and board of directors will be giving a declaration that no portion of the income or property has been or shall be paid, transferred directly, indirectly by way of dividend, bonus or otherwise to persons who are or have been members of the company or to any one or more of them or to any person claiming to any or more of them them any one or more of them so this is how you are required because section 8 company objective is totally different and when the company has obtained any special status privilege exemption benefit from authorities such as income tax department charity commissioner or any organization department of cg sg municipal body then a no objection certificate is required to be obtained if required under the terms of the said special status privilege exemption benefit grants from the concerned authority and it is to be filed with the regional director along with the application. The company is also required to file all its financial statements annual return up to the financial year preceding the submission of the application to the RD and all other returns required to be filed under the act up to the date of submitting the application to RD and in the event application is made after expiry of three months from the date of preceding financial year to which financial statement has been filed a statement of financial position which should be certified by the chartered accountant made up to date not preceding 30 days of filing the application it is to be attached company is going to attach with the application a certificate of practicing chartered accountant or company secretary in practice or cost accountant in practice certifying that whatever conditions are given in the act and rules relating to conversion under section 8 into any other company have been complied with. Now the regional director may require the applicant to furnish the approval or concurrence of any particular authority for grant of his approval for conversion and he may also obtain report from the registrar on receipt of this application and if satisfied, regional director is going to issue an order approving conversion of company into a company of any other kind 
as they have applied what will be the conditions that the company shall give up and shall not claim with effect from the date of conversion in the special status exemption privileges that it enjoyed by virtue of having been registered under section a if company had acquired any immobile property free of cost okay free of cost it may be required to pay the difference between the cost at which it is acquired such property and the market price and the time of conversion either to the government or to the authority that provided them the immobile property accumulated profit or unutilized income brought forward from previous years they will be forced to utilize to settle their dues amounts due to lenders claims of creditors suppliers service providers any loans advances by the promoters members in amount due to them and then it will be transferred to the investor education and protection fund within 30 days of receiving the approval for conversion so there are various conditions which are to be taken care of on receipt of approval of the regional director now the company is going to convene a general meeting to pass a special resolution for amending memorandum and articles after that they are going to file with the registrar certified copy of approval of rd within 30 days from the date of receipt of order in inc 20 amended memorandum and article and declaration by the directors that the conditions if any imposed by the regional director they have complied with that declaration is to be given on receipt of these documents registrar shall register the documents and issue a fresh certificate of incorporation so a bit tricky but if you go through it with a calm mind it is easy to understand just you should know the conditions which are applicable to section 8 company so that you can definitely solve the question if asked in the exam about conversion of section 8 into any other form of business okay next we have conversion of company into llp now if the company is willing to get itself converted into llp what procedure is to be followed so existing private company or unlisted public company can be converted into llp so form 2 for such conversion is to be filed then is to be taken for those designated partners who don't possess it already board meeting is to be convened resolution for conversion of company to llp is to be passed resolution to authorize any director to apply for name is to be done then name application is to be done with roc what will be the attachment board resolution which is passed by the company approving conversion will be attached then name approval is to be obtained after that we are going to draft the limited liability partnership agreement what will be the contents of the agreement name of the llp who will be the partners who will be the designated partners their details form of contribution profit sharing ratio rights duties of the partners what will be the proposed business and the rules which will be governing the llp now this llp agreement must be signed at the time of incorporation not mandatorily after incorporation also you can sign it because you are required to file it in form 3 within 30 days from the date of incorporation but to avoid any dispute between the partners we take it into consideration at the time of incorporation only so we are going to file the incorporation documents in file fill up form with roc what will be the attachment the proof of address of registered office subscription sheet signed by the promoters notice of consent and appointment of designated partners with their details details of llps companies in which partner designated partner is a director or partner after that we are required to file an application for conversion in e form 18 with roc again what will be the attachment statement of shareholders incorporation documents subscriber statement in form 2 filed electronically statement of assets and liabilities certified as true and correct by the auditor list of all secured creditors along with their consent to the conversion approval of the governing council in case of professional private limited companies noc from the income tax authority copy of acknowledgement of latest income tax return and approval from any other body authority as may be required if there are any pending proceedings then that particulars to be also filed after all formalities filings have been done and once the ministry approves it 
then the registrar of LLP is going to issue a certificate of registration in form number 19 as to conversion of LLP. So this will be the conclusive evidence that you have converted your organization. Then we are required to file E form 3 which is the LLP agreement. What will be the attachment for E form 3? LLP agreement and certificate of incorporation as LLP will be given. So this is how the conversion can be made. Then we have conversion of company limited by guarantee into a company limited by shares. So again not the section 8 company as per 2013 act or section 25 company as per 1956 act. For them this is not applicable. Company who wants to get converted shall have a share capital equivalent to the guarantee amount whatever was mentioned. Special resolution again is passed and authorizing such conversion. Omitting guarantee clause in memorandum of association altering the articles of association. Copy of special resolution will be filed in MGT 14 within 30 days from the date of passing of the resolution. Application in form INC 27 shall be filed with the registrar of companies within 30 days from passing the special resolution. What we are going to attach? Altered memorandum, altered article, list of members with the number of shares held, aggregating to minimum paid of capital which is equivalent to the amount of guarantee which is provided by its members. After taking into consideration, ROC will take a decision on the application filed within 30 days from the date of receipt of application and company shall be issued a certificate of incorporation. So this is how conversion can be made. Next conversion is your conversion of unlimited liability company into a limited liability company by shares or guarantee. So now this conversion of unlimited liability company is done by passing the special resolution again in a general meeting and INC2 application is to be filed. Within 7 days from the date of passing the special resolution, a notice is to be published in form INC 27A for proposed conversion again in one in English paper, one in vernacular language. Okay, then afterwards we are required to also place it on the website of the company if any that the proposal is there of conversion of the company into company limited by shares or guarantee if there are any objections then that objections again are to be taken into consideration from the persons who are interested in the affairs. Then notice is dispatched to creditors, debenture holders. So this is how we are going to do it and we are going to send those notices by registered post or by speed post or through courier with proof of dispatch because we require that proof of dispatch. Notice shall also state that the objection may be intimated to the registrar and to the company within 21 days of date of publication of this notice. Company within 45 days of passing this special resolution, they are going to file an application for conversion into a company limited by shares or guarantee along with the prescribed fees. What will be the attachment? Notice of general meeting with explanatory statement, copy of resolution passed in general meeting, copy of newspaper publication, copy of altered memorandum articles. Declaration signed by not less than two directors of the company including managing director if any that this conversion is not going to affect any debts, liabilities, obligation, contracts which are incurred or entered into by or on behalf of company before conversion. Complete list of creditors, complete list of debenture holders is to be given to whom individual notices have been sent. Name, address of every creditor and debenture holder, nature and respective amount due to them in respect of debts, claims, liabilities, declaration by director or of the company that notice as required has been dispatched to all creditors and debenture holders with proof of dispatch. Then a declaration is to be signed by not less than two directors of the company. One will be managing director if there is a managing director that they have made a full inquiry into affairs of the company. And they have formed an opinion that the list of creditors is correct. Estimated value which is given in the list of the debts claims payable on contingency are proper estimates of the values of such debts and claims. And there are no other debts or claims against the company as per their knowledge. Declaration of solvency again to be signed by at least two directors of the company. If there is a managing director, he is required to sign that declaration. Then we have 
after doing all this we require a certificate from the auditor that the company is solvent and it is a going concern basis on the date of passing of resolution by the board certifying solvency no objection certificate is required from the sectoral regulator if applicable no objection from all the secured creditors if any declaration signed again by not less than two directors now this declaration is that there are no complaints pending against the company from the members or investors and no inquiry inspection investigation is pending against the company or directors or officers registrar after considering the entire application objections if any received by the registrar and after ensuring that they have properly done each and everything then the registrar is going to decide whether approval should or should not be granted certificate of incorporation consequent to conversion of unlimited liability company into company limited by shares or guarantee will be given issued to the company upon grant of approval conditions that company shall not change its name for a period of 1 year from the date of conversion and the company shall not declare or distribute any dividend without satisfying any past debts liabilities obligation contract these are the conditions which are required to be taken care of okay now unlimited liability company is not eligible for conversion if its net worth is negative or application is pending under 1956 act or 2013 act for striking of its name or company is in default of any of its annual return financial statements or petition for winding up is pending or company has not received amount due on calls in arrears from its directors for a period not less than 6 months from due date or an inquiry inspection investigation is pending okay then we have companies authorized to register so that few companies you can direct do it then we have conversion of llp into company now if you want to convert llp into company so several businesses we have started as llps and now if they wish to convert themselves into a private limited company for more growth or business then they can get converted so for this what is to be done incorporation of new corporate entity and conversion of existing entity into a company so we have these two ways given so second option which is conversion we are going to discuss that it is practical for the existing entities to switch over from one mode to another process step by step process technical process you require expert knowledge time cost saving it will be if you take expert knowledge there were no provisions under companies act 2013 regarding conversion of llp into company but notification was passed on 31st may 2016 and now they have allowed conversion of llp into a company these rules are called as companies authorized to register amendment rules 2060 okay now there are various requirements as usual which we are required to be satisfied for converting llp into a private limited company such as that llp must have at least seven partners two partners can convert into company approval from all partners is required advertisement in newspaper is to be done in local and national newspaper noc is required from roc where such llp is registered and all incorporation process has to be undertaken which includes now first approval of name that name is to be approved so we are going to conduct a meeting of the partners to take assent and then afterwards name will be decided and then name once accepted by the authority will be valid for 60 days psc then is required now we are required to file form urc 1 after getting the name approval we are going to prepare form urc 1 what are documents required list of the members with various details their name address shares held by them appropriately first directors of the company with various details again their pin name address passport with expiry date etc affidavit from every person proposed as first directors that means not bound to be a director under section 164 list including name address of partners of llp copy of llp agreement certificate of registration duly verified by two designated partners statement indicating few specifications 
such as the nominal share capital of firm number of shares into which it is separated number of shares taken and the amount paid for every share name of the firm with the addition of word limited or private limited is required consent no objection from all the creditors is required copy of newspaper advertisement is required written consent from majority of the members present in person or by proxy undertaking that the proposed director shall comply with the requirement and the copy of the latest income tax return is required now in case application by a limited liability partnership of firm for registration as a company limited by guarantee or as unlimited company then we are required to have a list showing name address of operation not being more than 6 clear days before the day of seeking registration they were partners of the llp as the case may be with proof of membership list showing particulars of person proposed as first directors of the company that then passport number aadhar number if any with expiry date residential address is to be given in case of a firm deed of partnership bylaws other instruments are to be given in case company intended to be registered as company limited by guarantee then copy of resolution declaring amount of guarantee is to be given written consent no objection certificate from all secured creditors written consent from majority of members whether present in person proxy undertaking is to be given and copy of latest income tax return of llp or form as the case may be is to be submitted okay now we have registration of society as a company limited by guarantee under section a so in case application by a society is made for registration as a company limited by guarantee under section a again few documents such as list showing name address occupation of all persons is to be given list showing particulars of persons proposed to be first directors is to be given list containing name address members of the governing body of the society certified copy of certificate of registration no objection certificate from secured creditors undertaking latest income tax return again all those things which we have discussed in the previous thing then we have registration of trust as company limited by guarantee so again list showing details of all the persons list for first director certified copy of certificate of registration of the trust trust d no objection certificate from secured creditors written consent from majority of the members undertaking that the proposed directors they will comply with the requirement of indian stamp act copy of the latest income tax return of the trust details of the objects of the company is to be given okay so now we have last point for discussion that is memorandum of association and articles of association now they are to be formulated filed with roc after getting name approval sanction of form number urc1 from the registrar so company is required to for, file form inc32 along with urc1 as linked form what will be the attachment memorandum article inc9 and dir2 so conversion process provides few tax benefits after availing the same several additional requirements are to be taken care of for example maintaining same shareholding by the partners as they were in the llp when the conversion took place for 5 years from conversion the former partners of llp who are now shareholders in the company cannot in total have shareholding less than 50% there is one more option available for llp which is to establish a separate private limited company and after that get the whole business transferred to the private company with help of a written agreement in such case restrictions mentioned above such as need for minimum 7 partners newspaper publication etc they are not required and but in this situation there is capital gain tax so stamp duty implication is applicable to such transfer so this is how there are ways which you can avail for conversion so this is all about conversion of from one entity to another entity and we are required to follow the provisions restrictions of each and every organization then only we can convert the organization from one form to another we have seen various processes just go through it it is very easy you will get to know that many processes are same such as for in every conversion for filing special resolution 
MGT 14 is required to be filed within 30 days from passing the special resolution. So generally we have seen that there is board meeting, then there is general meeting, then e-form filing is to be done for compliances. So this is how the conversion is carried out. I hope you enjoyed the session. As always, I suggest to keep your study material along with you while watching the videos so that it is easy for you to understand because you are going to study from the study material and you will get in detail all the points which I have discussed in the study material. So thank you so much for watching this video. See you guys in some another chapter. All the best.